welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm gonna talk about creatine supplements. You know, my husband and my 17-year-old son have been taking creatine supplements for a couple of months, but as a doctor, I'm always skeptical about supplements, and so I wanted to do some research. Well, what is creatine? Creatine is a naturally occurring substance that's found in our muscles and also in other foods like red meat and fish. It supports ATP production, which is the main source of energy that cells use, especially in high intensity exercise. And the way that it's promoted is that it's supposed to enhance athletic performance and support muscle recovery. The dosage that's recommended is three to five grams per day, although some data suggests that doing a loading dose of 20 grams per day over five days is also beneficial. But in order to get five grams with this particular product, you need to eat four gummies. So that would mean eating 16 gummies a day, which I think is a lot and is expensive. Some data shows that just taking three to five grams per day over an extended period of time gets just as much benefit. Also, the loading dose of that 20 grams per day can lead to some water retention and make people feel like they're gaining weight when it's just the muscle holding on to extra water. The best way to take creatine is with protein and a carb because the absorption into the muscle occurs better. And some data shows the best time to take it is after a workout. Another thing that the data really suggests is that creatine monohydrate is the best form. It's absorbed the best and has the best data. There are other forms out there that may claim to have better absorption, but I don't know that the data really supports that or suggests that. Usually creatine is sold as a powder, but there are other forms available like those gummies that I showed you. Okay, so what does the data show? Surprisingly, there's actually some good data to show that some of those claims are backed up, but let me get into the nuances of that. One study showed benefits in repeated exercise of six to 30 second intervals at maximal force, and then with some rest in between. So things like American football, soccer, tennis, weightlifting and sprinting are some, some sports that creatine may be beneficial. Another study with young men less than 36 years old showed some benefits in weightlifting ability and the supplement increased their max lifting weight for both bench press and squat, but those results were not seen in women or in older men. However, other studies have shown benefits in females, including increased strength and power and exercise tolerance. In endurance sports, the results just aren't as consistent as these high intensity short burst exercises. What about in older adults greater than 65, you know, as people age, we really want to retain the muscle that they have. And some data did show that along with resistance training, older adults benefited from a creatine supplement and increased muscle mass and upper body strength, but it needed to be along with resistance training and it needed to be used for a sustained period of time. And unfortunately, adding creatine didn't help bone mineral density in women. One thing that I always have carried with me and when my husband and son said that they were going to be taking creatine supplements, I was worried about harm to the kidney. That is something that I learned along the way and it makes sense because the byproduct of breakdown from creatine is creatinine and we measure creatinine in the blood to see how healthy the kidney is. It's one of the many ways you can do that. And so when I see an increase in creatinine, I worry about the kidney. But I was happy to find the data showed that people that use creatine at the doses recommended, and if they have normal kidney function, no harm to the kidney is done. There have been studies that have shown harm to the kidney, but these patients usually had an underlying kidney defect or kidney problem or they took massive amounts of creatine. However, it may be something that you mentioned to your doctor because when your doctor does routine blood studies and your creatinine is a little bit elevated, that is gonna freak them out. In order to make sure that your kidneys is truly normal, some other studies may need to be done. I also wanna pause and say, you know, anytime someone takes a supplement, I'm always worried about contamination within the supplement. Supplements are not regulated, they can pretty much say whatever they want. And so there's just a lot of variability. So make sure that you're getting your creatine supplement from a reliable source. You know, if you're getting it from a small business that operates only online, I would caution you. There are also two really great websites that you can go and check the creatine supplement to make sure that it's pure and doesn't have any contamination in it. Those two websites are Informed Sport 
and NSF certified for sport. I'll put those links in the description below. You know, unfortunately, these two supplements were not approved by Informed Sport or NSF. So that was kind of disappointing. I think when and if my husband and son decide to continue creatine, I'm gonna encourage them to find a supplement that's been vetted by one of those two organizations. At the end of the day, I was surprised. I feel like there is some good data behind creatine's claims to enhance athletic performance, increase lean muscle mass, and increase strength. Especially in high intensity exercise, creatine monohydrate is the best form to use. You can consider doing the loading dose of 20 grams per day for five days. And then it is important to just use three to five grams per day. And then also buy a reputable brand. I hope this was helpful. If you like the content of this video, please like and subscribe to my videos and put a comment below if you have any other suggestions, thoughts, or concerns. Thanks for joining me.